My name is Michelle, and I'm also an ID student at University Arts. And as you can see, the time makes me a little bit crazy. <laughs> but in all seriousness, the uh, last three years that I've had at UArts has been very great for me. It's emboldened the passion that I have. Um, it has taught me to see opportunities, explore new perspectives, and has taught me how to not be afraid to meet. The first project <coughs> I'm going to go in today is my porcelain project. So this was an exploration in molding and casting. So I knew that I was working with porcelain, which is a traditional material. I knew I was making a vessel, but <clears throat> at this point I didn't really have a good point of entry. So I just started getting my hands on every vessel that I could find and just started watching people use them. And I noticed there was this moment in every person's experience where they had to lift the vessel off the table to empty it. So I asked myself, is there a way I can design one that doesn't have to be lifted? So if I had in mind people with arthritis or children or people below dexterity, they might have a little bit more trouble picking up a heavy pitcher. So this is the design I came up with after a lot of foam models and stuttering. Because it does have a complex interior shape, I did choose to use bent cherry veneer as the bottom base. So I did my casting and I did my, um, sorry, and my molding and this is what I came up with. So that is my final piece. Um, although there are some things that I would change, I think overall it was pretty successful and did it exactly what I needed it to. My second project is my client project. So this is Marsha. She is a very independent, sassy woman who lives in Philly. And unfortunately she suffers from multiple sclerosis, arthritis, and scoliosis. So this was a collaboration that I did with Jefferson <coughs> University. I work with three occupational therapy students and one other ID student to kind of just get to know her and figure out what we could do to improve her life a little bit. And as we did a lot of ethnographic interviews with her, we went to her home, we just sat with her and talked to her, we realized that she's very independent, so it was a little difficult. But eventually she opened up to us and let us know that she has suffered several third degree burns all over her body because she suffers from spasms and she's always drinking coffee. So there's a few times where she spilled it on herself and because she was having a spasm wasn't able to move it and it just burnt her body. So with the occupational therapy students, we tried to design a, an object that we could fit on her favorite coffee mug that she was not willing to give up in order to help with this. And this is the observation that we first started with. As you can see, because of her arthritis, her thumb is completely inverted, so her grip is very insecure, and that's part of the reason why she started having spasms. So we started looking into her grip and what was going on and how we could affect it. So as you can see, two of the joints in her thumb completely rotate, and it becomes very uncomfortable, and the bottom is our version of a pressure mat. So as you can see, a normal grip you, the pressure is distributed throughout the hand, but as her thumb turns, it, there's a few spots that are just very, very painful. So the difficult part of collaborating with occupational therapy students was they were very nervous to sketch and to make. So we, as designers, had to design research a little bit differently. So we gave them sheets of blank pictures of mugs so that they could sketch on top of it and feel more comfortable. And we had a few design sessions where we just brought clay and tape and cardboard and we all just started building up these chunky monkey prototypes on the, these cups. And after a while they got very comfortable and started generating some pretty good ideas. So we brought a few to Marsha and some of them were strange. Some of them she absolutely hated. But eventually we saw that when we handed her this one, her grip completely improved. Just because there was that one thing at the end, her thumb was in a completely different position and was much more comfortable. So we furthered that design. Um, then we had to go into materials. Now I've never worked with silicone before, so we actually went to the Smooth On factory. We were able to test all different kinds of plastics and rubbers and silicone in order to find one that was tactile and grippy, but also universally stretch enough to fit onto um, any mug if she wanted to eventually change her mug in the future. So we CNC'd the mold, it's a three-part mold, and we were able to produce that. It's a EcoFlex 50 silicone 
cup koozie with a 3D printed handle for a little more support. And that is her in the bottom holding it. Um, she specifically said she loves that it feels very gooey, which is not what we're going for, but she loved it, so <laughs> we can say it was good. And that is my final piece. And my third one is my nanny pack. Um, for a year in Philly, I was a nanny, and I discovered this whole underworld or underground market that I had not personally known because I did not have a kid, but they're just the childcare network is huge. There's nannies and babysitters and moms and grandparents, and they're just, you know, the products that they all have, it's almost like a competition. But the one thing I absolutely hated was the uh, diaper bag. It was the one that I had was huge. I couldn't choose it because I didn't buy it myself. It was their, her parents who bought it, and it was heavy. So I started looking into how to redesign it. And when I did it, I was starting to think about the family. Who am I designing for when I design a diaper bag? And this is what we normally think. You know, two parents, some kids. But in reality, you know, three days a week, the kid's with the nanny. Two days a week, they're with the grandparents. Maybe a babysitter on the weekend. So it's just the family's a lot bigger than you originally think. So I started looking at the bags that I saw people using every day, and kind of what was good, what was bad. But all of these are like $400 bags, and frankly, each one of them I think had a little bit of issues. So I was seeing what I can do to change that. <coughs> so I just started prototyping and making bag after bag with different pockets, different materials to see what I could do. And in interviewing all of these child caregivers, or child care workers, I noticed that there's a few things like lightweight material, durability, uh, washability, these are all what they needed. So I chose um, Cordero Nylon for my final piece. And for the interior, there were some specific things that were very important to them, was these bottle pockets, a private pocket on the inside with a zipper, and an outside uh, tech pocket. And during my research, I was interviewing all these different people and I still hadn't found the person I was designing for yet because there were so many different people. I realized the common denominator was the child. So I made a diaper bag that went from a tote for an adult but converts to a backpack for the child because the diaper bag is really following the child, not really the person carrying it. So this way when there's that transition of care, the child can wear it to go to daycare or go to the nannies and it just flows a little bit nicer. Is that thing more? 